this question about whether the emergency ordinance, emergency proclamation and ordinance are constitutional or justifiable is it, a matter of opinion. My opinion may be slightly different from um, uh, for those here. But before I answer your question, and let me clarify something. There is a popular but mistaken view that once an emergency is proclaimed, the constitution of Malaysia is automatically suspended. Parliament is dissolved. Cabinet is dismissed. Elections are postponed. Human rights are suspended. And the federal government acquires state powers. Actually, uh, none of this may be true. A proclamation of emergency does not automatically suspend any law or any institution or any procedure. It only opens the gates to the enactment of emergency laws by parliament or the Yang Di Pertuanagong if they so choose. One must distinguish between an emergency proclamation, which is just a declaration, and an emergency act or ordinance, which provides the law. So the emergency proclamation is just a two, three paragraph statement saying the country is under an emergency. If you want to discuss the uh, propriety or justice, you have to look to the emergency ordinance. Uh, what does it contain? That's where the question of justice or injustice. Now, let's look at the Constitution. Article 150, Clause 1 defines the term emergency to refer to the threats to the security or economic life or public order of the Federation or any part thereof. You'll notice the words economic life are also regarded as part of an emergency. Then in the case of Stephen Kalong Ninkan, 1968, Stephen Kalong Ninkan versus Government of Malaysia, 1968, it was held by the courts that the term emergency includes wars, famines, earthquakes, floods, epidemics, and collapse of civil government. Now, in my personal view, the COVID-19 epidemic clearly qualifies as an economic emergency, as an epidemic, and as a collapse of civil government. Um, um, uh, not the COVID, uh, the, the, the reality in Malaysia as a collapse of civil government. You know, in the last two years for those, eight, eight governments have fallen. One at the federal level, Tun Mahathir's government. Two in Sabah. Two in Perak. Johor, Negri Sembilan, Malacca. Eight governments have fallen. So they're real. There is a, uh, there, there is what is going on, this party hopping. Like the, 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 in the village we used to play, uh, Tang Tang, uh, <laughs> Hopscotch. Hopscotch is going on. There is a, uh, a very, very uh, shameful act of uh, party hopping. So actually there's a lot of instability. Uh, I, I think on the basis of this emergency um, is not entirely unjustified, though I fully ag agree with the um, Firdaus that perhaps there are other laws that could have been utilized, the Infectious Diseases Control Act, and then there is the National Security Council Act. But Firdaus, the National Security Council Act is an ordinary law and it is being questioned as unconstitutional. And I will not be surprised at all if it is declared unconstitutional. To me, uh, to end my answer, to me, actually, the main advantages of this uh, 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 emergency would be the following. First of all, during the period of this emergency, no federal or state elections will be held. And therefore, party hoppers will be deprived of the nefarious opportunity to bring about the fall and rise of governments has happened eight times. There'll be a little bit more political stability. Um, uh, fortunately, this emergency for the first time in 63 years, this emergency has a sunset clause. There is a time limit up to August 1. There's a special committee to advise the young Di Pertuanagong and the government on whether uh, COVID-19 uh, emergency should be lifted. Uh, economic re recovery may be possible, better. Um, 
role of the young di pertonagong as a statesman and stabilizer has been enhanced and to some extent bipartisanship is being promoted in the sense that all parties are being invited to join this so all in all i think um the issue of whether this is an emergency or not is i know debatable but i personally think that uh, the number of cases yesterday i think it was 4300 cases for us yesterday uh clearly people are dying people are losing jobs i think there is an economic emergency uh, if nothing else there is clearly an economic emergency in the country uh, that's all for this question and thanks